In this lecture, we explain the kinematic model of an n degree of freedom robot manipulator. Manipulating industrial robots, which are also known as robot manipulators or simply manipulators, are composed of joints and links. There are two main types of joints for robot manipulators, primary joints and compound joints. Primary joints provide one degree of freedom. The two types of primary joints are revolute or rotary joints and prismatic or linear joints. A revolute joint allows a relative rotation between two links and the rotation is around the axis of rotation and is denoted by an angle theta. A prismatic joint allows a linear relative motion between two links and the translation along the axis of translation is denoted by D. Primary joints are the basic joints which can be added together to create more complicated joints known as compound joints, which have more degrees of freedom. An example of a compound joint is a spherical joint which has three degrees of freedom, so it can rotate around all three axes. For the analysis of robotic manipulators, we can replace a compound joint by several primary joints. For example, we can replace a spherical joint with three intersecting revolute joints. Manipulators links are connected by joints and form a kinematic chain. As an example, consider this robot manipulator which has one prismatic joint and five revolute joints. The configuration of a robot manipulator is a complete specification of the location of every point on the manipulator. For rigid robots, which are robots with rigid links and joints, if the values of the joint variables, which are joint angles for revolute joints and joint offsets for prismatic joints, are known, then the position of every point on the manipulator can be found. For instance, if we have a robot with three revolute joints and three links, and if we know the parameters of the robot such as the dimensions of the links, we can locate every point on the robot using the joint angles Q1, Q2, and Q3. So the configuration of a rigid manipulator is represented by the vector of joint variables, which is denoted by Q. The configuration of this robot can be obtained using a vector of joint variables Q, which is a 3 by 1 vector. For revolute joints, the entries QI are the angles theta i, and for prismatic joints, QI are the linear displacements denoted by di. Kinematic analysis is the study of the geometry of motion of a robot without considering the torques and forces that cause the motion. Consider a robot with three joints. The joint variables are denoted by the vector Q, which contains the angles of the three joints. The position of the end vector of the robot is also denoted by a two-dimensional vector X. If you are interested in the position and orientation of the end vector, then the end vector configuration can be represented by a 3D vector. So we can either represent the manipulator position in the joint space using the joint variables or in the task space by representing the position of the end effector relative to the base frame. The problem of finding the end effector's configuration X using joint variables is called forward kinematics. So forward kinematic is a mapping from the joint space to the end effector coordinates or the task space. The problem of finding the joint variables from the position and orientation of the end effector is called the inverse kinematics. Forward kinematics provide a unique end effector configuration for any given vector of joint variables. But inverse kinematics problem is not as simple as forward kinematics. There might be multiple solutions for the inverse kinematics problem and it's usually hard to find analytic closed form solutions for the inverse kinematics as the kinematic equations are nonlinear. The inverse kinematic is useful when we want to command or control a robot to move to a desired location. So we know the end effector location and want to find the desired joint coordinates of the robot corresponding to the end effector location. 
We will show by an example how to find the forward kinematics and inverse kinematics of a two degree of freedom planar robot. In the forward kinematics problem, we want to find the coordinates of the end effector using the joint angles Q1 and Q2. The X1 component of the end effector position equals L1 cosine of Q1 plus L2 cosine of Q1 plus Q2. Note that the second link is at the angle of Q2 from the first link. That's why we have the term cosine of Q1 plus Q2 when we project the end effector position onto the X1 axis. Similarly, the X2 component of the end effector position equals L1 sine of Q1 plus L2 sine of Q1 plus Q2. The angle x3 is equal to q1 plus q2. So the forward kinematics can be written in this form. It's a mapping from the joint variables q to the end effector's configuration x. We can plug in any vector q into this equation and obtain x. Note that for any given vector q, we get a unique vector x. We now go to the inverse kinematics problem. We have the end effector position and want to find the joint angles. Since this is a two degree of freedom robot, the end effector cannot be at any desired angle. So we only assume that the position of the end effector is given and we want to find the joint angles that correspond to the given position. Even for this simple example, finding the analytic solution is not very easy. The angles Q1 and Q2 are in this form. Note that there are two solutions for this inverse kinematics problem, which are shown in this figure. And there are only two possible values for the angle x3. We see in this example that the end effector cannot go to any desired position or orientation in 2D using just two joints. We need at least three joints to be able to move the end effector to a desired position and orientation.